Hello and welcome to the Hacks and Knits YouTube channel. My name is Deanna. I am a master knitter living in rhineland Falls, Germany. Oh, today I am in, well, actually today I'm in France. I woke up and thought it's time to go for a hike. So I am hiking around some castles here on the border between France and Germany. Uh, as always, I'm going to ask you to please forgive the quality of my video today. I am still in the middle of my move and so I don't have all my equipment yet, but I couldn't resist the chance to stop and just say hello to you while I'm out here hiking today. Let's see if we can do this in German too. Hallo, ich heiße Diana, ich bin ein Strickermeisterin. Uh, ich bin aus Amerika, aber ich wohne seit sieben Jahren in Okinawa and I'm happy to be here. <laughs> now I am here in Germany. So today, I don't know what I'm going to talk about. I just thought I'd record this while I'm out here and save it for when I'm ready to show you all the things I've been working on. Take a look at all of this. It's stunning here. It is a cold and rainy day here in Germany today, so I hope you'll forgive me. I'm filming indoors today. I am still in the process of moving, which is why you see empty house behind me. I have some loaned uh, couch back there that is our sole source of comfortable seating. Um, and hopefully you'll forgive me, but you're gonna hear some of the house noises. I don't have my fancy camera or lights or any of those things with me, but I'm super excited to be back and filming podcasts. So hopefully you won't hear too many distractions as one of my cats meows on cue and Let's just get started with what I've been up to because I feel like it's been months. I mean, it's been months. It really has. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about what I've been doing over all these months, but let's just jump right into what I really want to talk to you about, which is the knitting, right? Okay, number one. <laughs> this is really hard to do. <laughs> so I had mentioned in my last episode that I had been doing some test knitting and this beautiful cardigan is the result of that. Let me see if I can put it on. It is quite cold in here, but I don't know if it's quite cold enough for a cardigan on top of a sweatshirt. Let's see. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. I have been wearing this thing a ton, so it's already starting to show a little bit of wear and tear, but let's talk about this cardigan. This was a test knit that I did. It is a, okay, the name of the cardigan is Bouldering and it is by uh, Kristen Hipsky is the designer of it. And this is knit in Quince & Co. Osprey. Osprey is the name of the yarn. It is an Aran weight, 100% American wool. So they advertise 100% um, grown, spun and dyed in the USA, which is really funny because I bought it while I was living in Japan and I knit it while I was in Germany. Whatever, we know, whatever, this is fine. <laughs> and I absolutely enjoyed working on this project. So if you have not yet seen this cardigan, uh, go check it out. So again, it's called bouldering and it is quite fun to knit. So you actually knit this first panel. Oh yeah, you can definitely see I'm starting to pill here. You knit the panel first, so all the way up, all the way back down the back of it. And I'll put in a little video of me showing it off. I actually filmed a little segment of me twirling around in it while I was still living in Japan. And then you actually pick up and you knit this way for the sleeves. So it's kind of a fun project and it was exactly what I was looking for. Um, I know I usually am talking about how much I love color work. Color work is my true love. I love some Fair Isle, some strand color work, some mosaic color work, but I was just in the mood for some texture. So just some knits and pearls and cables and button bands and you know, you get in that mood sometimes. So what do I want to talk about with this? Um, first of all, it has pockets. Come on, how many sweaters have pockets nowadays? Let's see, oh, okay, okay, okay. I can do this. Pockets, there they are. And the pockets are knit quite nicely, just like a uh, double knit. So if you've ever done double knitting, you know that it forms two layers of knitting that are only joined on the edges. And the designer took advantage of that to make cute little pockets for this. 
my cats are destroying something. There's nothing in the house to destroy. So I don't know how they're always destroying something, but they always are. Anyway, this was just a fun, fun knit. I do like this yarn a lot, but I have been wearing this for about three months and have quite a bit of pilling showing. So I need to get that gleaner out and get all those pills out. But the yarn is soft, soft, soft. To me, there's no itch factor. Um, my husband is very sensitive to wool, so I know that he would say there's a little bit of itch if you're very sensitive to wool, which I am not. So I have absolutely loved working on this project. You know, it wouldn't be a Haxton Knits episode without a screaming cat, would it? <laughs> Stoli, come here. Come here and quit yelling at me. We'll come back to that in a minute. I um, have been on a little bit of a kick of Quince & Co yarn. So I had never used Quince & Co before when I signed up to do this test knit. Gosh, isn't that beautiful? The colorway is called Smoke if you're looking for this particular colorway. So when I bought the yarn, they give you a discount for being a test knitter. I just went ahead and also bought a sweater's quantity of their lighter, um, uh, uh, lighter, their lighter base yarn. So this is the 100% American wool Aran weight or heavy worsted weight. And on my needles now is their sport weight version. So this is, um, Let's just get it out so you can see what I'm talking about. There we go. This is the Quince & Co. Chickadee um, Organic Heathers. And this is the colorway Torn, T-O-R-N-E. Uh, this is colorway number 166 in case you're wondering about it. But I have been working with this to make another sweater. It's just kind of a... a uh, theme going in my colors here today. So if you are using this smoke, it reads a little bit blue green compared to the torn, which is gray, gray, gray. And if I really want to stretch, I might say a little bit of blue red kind of flex or tones in here that you can really only see when it's in the light. But when it's in the light, there's a little bit of like blue and red in there. Let me show you what I've been working on. This, oh, that's the back side. There you go. Check this out. So this is the Divide. It's called Divide. It's a pullover. And who's it by? I have notes in front of me. I have very professional notes today. I jotted them on the German newspaper that I received that I didn't sign up for. I don't know why I'm getting a German newspaper, but it's very useful for our um, comp compost trash. So anything that's biodegradable, we can compost. So the German newspaper, I do my best to try to read it. And then I wrap all my garbage in it and throw it away. Um, anyway, so Divide, Divide Pullover by Emily Green. And this is the Quince & Co Chickadee in the colorway Torn. And I um, am very proud of myself for working on this sweater because if you had asked me when I was a brand new knitter, would I knit a sport weight one by one twisted rib with cables for a sweater, I'd have probably told you to go shove it because it would never get done. It would take a million, million years before I got it done. And yet here I am working on it and loving it and enjoying every step of the process. So this is a one by one, twisted rib, or I guess a half twisted rib, you're only twisting the knit side, with little one by one cables, which I am doing without a cable needle. If you have never done cables without a cable needle, or maybe you've tried them and thought, meh, too fussy, I would recommend revisiting them because I also felt that way the first time I did cables without a cable needle, I was like, eh, too fussy, I'm, I, you know, I can just zip along. Um, but once I did a project with lots of one by one cables, um, I just got the hang of it and realized it was really fast, a little bit easier to do than you think it is. I think there's probably two sets of instructions out there for cabling without a cable needle. I've seen one where you do this like reaching around, reaching around, twisting with, you know, kind of feels like making yarn tangles. And then I've seen one where you just kind of pinch it and pull your needle out and put it where it needs to be. And that's the one that works for me. I'll see if I can find a link to a tutorial 
on one by one or you know cabling without a cable needle because I do recommend it. It will speed up your work if you do a lot of cables and once you get the hang of it it's actually really pretty easy. Um, Maybe it's more of an intermediate skill. It's a good skill to have after you're pretty comfortable with reading your work, because if you mess it up and, and don't pick up the right thing, uh, you have to kind of read your work and, and fix it. And that is something that I think really only comes with time. I think reading your work as a knitter is a skill that, um, it just comes with doing it. So what, the more you knit, the more familiar you are with the fabric that you make and, um, the more comfortable you are with getting your, your live stitches off the needles. So, you know, when you take all your needle, all your stitches off and just rip back a few rows and pick them back up. I think that is a skill that really comes once you are a little bit more experienced with knitting. So don't fret if you're a beginner knitter and you're looking at your knitting and you can't figure out, is this a knit stitch or a purl stitch? And how do I count how many rows I've done? That will come. Just keep knitting. Don't stress about it. Anyway, so this is actually the back of this sweater. It is a beautiful pullover sweater. And I'll try to put some pictures in because it's kind of hard to see. There you go. I've been just on this kick, you know, now that I'm somewhere that has cold weather and I can actually knit things out of cold, you know, uh, sweaters, knit sweaters, wear sweaters. Very excited. Anyway. I am not used to this format where I have to talk to you with no edits and no breaks. So I'm rambling a little bit and that's okay. Let's move on to what is next because I have been doing some traveling and on my traveling, I've been doing a little bit of acquisitions and buying up lots of yarn and I am super excited to tell you about. So for the past few months, we've been here in Germany, my husband and I and our two cats with no furniture, and this is the way it goes, right? Shipping is um, disrupted, so our household goods are on a boat somewhere. They're estimating three to four months with no, uh, <clears throat> no, no news yet. So hopefully, I think I probably have four or five more weeks of no furniture before our stuff arrives. Uh, and so I've been using this as an excuse to do all the traveling, all the traveling all the time. Uh, I mean, there's nothing to do in our house. So if we have a weekend off together, we've been doing the traveling. I do not think I'll be doing this much traveling because let's be honest, I can't afford it. You can't travel all the time, it's expensive. But since we are new here and okay, let's be real. My husband and I are Americans. The idea of going to other countries is still really cool. Like I'm really excited to say, oh, I went hiking in France this morning and it sounds so pretentious because in the US, only people with a lot of money go hiking in France or, you know, go weekend in Switzerland or things like that. So um, being where I am, which is in the rhineland faltz state of Germany and being very close to Luxembourg, Belgium, France, Switzerland, I have been just taking advantage. And so our first month here, September, September is when we got here. Um, we went to France. We went on a champagne tour in France and visited Epernay and, you know, did the very French thing of, you know, sitting out on the promenade and having dinner with wine. And it felt very fancy for us because we are not very fancy people. And uh, we bought a lot of champagne and then drank a lot of champagne, as you do when you have an empty house and nothing to do on the weekends. So that is what we did our first month here in Germany and I'll hopefully be sneaking in some pictures here. I'm sort of getting the hand of um, editing without all of my editing software and kind of sneaking things in here. So forgive me if the quality's a little weird and the sound's a little weird, whatever, it happens. Uh, so our second month here, we went to Belgium. Now we had to drive through Luxembourg to get to Belgium, but I do hopefully want to plan a weekend in Luxembourg still. I'm trying to do a long weekend in every country that I can that's within reasonable driving distance. Um, and we spent some time in Bastogne. And if you're from the US, you probably grew up calling that city Bastogne, um, as in the Battle of the Bulge, World War II. If you're a Band of Brothers fan, you've probably seen 
um, some of the episodes where they were easy company was bunkered down outside of Baston. But if you're actually there, it's Bastonia, right? Bastonia, or at least that's the way everything was pronounced in the museum. So please uh, do not blow me up in the comments saying that's not how you pronounce that place. Uh, I don't care. I'm going to say it. Probably a mix of the two are back and forth and language is an interesting fluid beast that pronunciations vary from place to place and dialect to dialect and so I tend not to be too picky about the right pronunciations of words um, and also I tend to butcher words anyway because I've been living in Asia for the past seven years. I just got the hang of pronunciations of you know, Japanese words and things like that. And now here I am in Europe and having to learn new pronunciations and language rules. So forgive me, but we visited uh, Bastogne and the war museum there. Um, we also went to a castle and I want to call it Bouillon Castle, which may or may not be right, but it was beautiful, uh, relaxing vacation. I had intended to go and visit the Orval Brewery Abbey, the Abbey of the Orval Brewery, because uh, viewers of my channel know I am a beer fan. I do in fact make beer sometimes. I took a pretty extended break in Japan where it was technically illegal to brew your own beer. Uh, so hopefully when my stuff arrives, we'll have beer brewing back on the channel and you'll see little snippets of that. But we are planning on going back to Belgium to visit some of the Belgian breweries because Belgian beer is my favorite, my love, what I like to drink. Uh, anyway, that's a whole lot of rambling to tell you about where I just came from this weekend. And I did make some little sneaky yarn purchases. So this weekend, my husband and I went to Switzerland. Yeah, it, it, we're not this fancy. This feels too fancy for us. But we were staying in Greer, Switzerland, as in the cheese. If you've ever had Greer cheese and you like, like that kind of cheese, it is a very touristy, but very cute place to stay. We stayed at the St. George's Hotel Le Greer. Yeah, I can't pronounce any of this. Anyway, so Greer, um, it's a little medieval town. It looks like all the things you picture when you think of like, Christmas in Switzerland, um, beautiful, you know, town center with a fountain and pretty much the only thing that's there is a very nice looking castle, which I'll talk to you about, uh, the H.R. Geiger Museum and Bar, which I'll show you pictures of, and lots of hotels and restaurants serving lots of fondue. So we went there for the weekend, um, just a long weekend, did a little bit of hiking, and on our way back from Switzerland, I stopped and bought some yarn. I was, you know, spending my time thinking, okay, there are so many sheep here. If you don't know this, I don't, I don't know if this is a thing or not, but as soon as we crossed the border into Switzerland, sheep, that's all I saw. Every field we passed was sheep. So I, I you know, you know, I'm in love with sheep. I like, I like the yarn. I like the, the things that sheep produce. So I'm always looking out for sheep. And I've taken pictures of every sheep in my neighborhood um, and keep discovering more of them too, which is really exciting. So when I crossed the border into Switzerland and started seeing all these sheep, I started thinking I must buy some local yarn. And so on our way back from our trip in Switzerland, I stopped at this place. So this is, uh, oh boy, I must say this wrong, Speicher, Speicher Handwork. Here you go. And I will put the website up so you can visit there too. But this is a wool mill and they sell tons of wool products and yarn. And I happened to catch them at a Monday market in Solothurn. Mm -hmm. And bought some yarn. So I stopped, I got three skeins of yarn. This is 100% Reine Schurvula. Mm -hmm. Reine Schurvula. So what, pure virgin wool, something like that. Um, and this is of course in the color of Dunkelgrau and Hellegrau. So dark gray and light gray. This is my beer knowledge coming into effect here because a Hell or Hella, right? In German is the, the light beers and the Dunkels are the dark beers. I, you know, light and dark, but it's my beer knowledge. 
So I saw Hella Grau and Dunkel Grau and thought, oh, yep, I know what that means, light gray, dark gray. Very nice. You, I know you guys don't care. But this yarn is super, super soft and squishy. I'm really like, it's got, okay, it's got a hint of an inch, just a teeny hint. Uh, my husband would never wear it because, like I said, he's very itchy, but um, I am planning on making a mitten and hat set with these because my hands have been freezing since I arrived here in Germany. Let's get a close up here. I do want to mention that these were very reasonably priced. So this is 8.5 um, Swiss francs. Oh yes, uh, Switzerland is not part of the European Union and your euros are useless there. I wish I had known that before I crossed the border and suddenly found myself with no functioning money. <laughs> I need to plan my trips better. I was like, oh, I've been to all these other countries, no problem. Do, do cross the border we go and oh, new language, new money. Um, half of Switzerland, it seems, speaks French and half speaks German and a little bit of Italian and then a little bit of what's called Swiss German, which doesn't sound quite like German. Yeah, you can tell I'm an American in Europe. This is all new to me and I'm very excited to be here. And right this moment, my washing machine is making the most noise I've ever heard it make in my life. And I think it might just explode. I'm sure you can hear this. So let's just take a little break. So I thought I'd take a few minutes and just film the end of my episode here outside because the nosy neighbors are here. When I moved in, I thought this was an abandoned lot or an empty lot next to my house, but it appears to be a field for some of the local horses and they've been doing a good job of chomping down all the weeds that were growing and uh, it's been fun. They're every window of my house right now. If I look out the window, I have a horse in the background looking in on me, which is so fun. What a difference it has been from my life in Okinawa for the last few years. So I thought I would talk a little bit about Greer, Switzerland, where we went to visit. Um, it, like I said, is a very cute town, very um, sort of medieval and quaint. And in this town is the H.R. Geiger Museum and Bar, which does not fit the atmosphere of the town at all but it is really interesting and fun and it's interesting to spot the people who are visiting just for the Geiger Museum. You can tell right away just by the way they dress um, compared to everybody else. But my husband and I enjoyed visiting the bar and if you are not familiar with Geiger's um, artwork it is uh, most commonly referenced from the Aliens movies. So if you've seen Alien, Aliens, Aliens, whatever um, all of the sets and all of the creatures were designed by H.R. Geiger. Unfortunately, most of his artwork is not safe for everyday consumption, so um, children probably should not visit the museum if they are in town, and I uh, struggled to find any pictures that I could actually show of the museum that would be safe to put up on a um, family friendly website so just be warned if you are going to visit that it's not necessarily a family friendly museum. Uh, we also visited the castle there and it was unfortunately very very foggy so we didn't get to see uh, very much of the views that day. Ah the pristine mountain views. doing my part. I did. <laughs> Patrolling the gown, the grounds, keeping us safe from attackers. Yep. Apparently they don't want us to jump out the windows. And we also got to stop in, uh, where did we stop? We stopped at uh, Augusta Rorica, which is 
one of the largest and most intact Roman uh, villages north of the Alps. And so we got to spend some time looking at the Roman ruins and just kind of giggling because right in the middle of the sheep field is this column from a piece of Roman architecture that was put up in 50 AD. It's really a very interesting place. Yeah, what a cute thing. No pooping on the podcast, okay? We want to make this family friendly. Behave yourselves. <laughs> so I think that's all I have for today. This has been fun. I hope you forgive the, you know, sound and lighting faux pas today. I'm doing the best I can with the equipment I have. And I look forward to seeing you all next time. All right, channel. What's more important? Ancient Roman ruins in Switzerland? Or sheep. My husband's making fun of me because I walked up on these ancient ruins and then went, oh, there's sheep. I'm sure you understand. <laughs>